<clears throat> Welcome to the second session of Ignite Talks. If you're not familiar with uh, Ignite Talks, it's five minute talks, five speaker, one, two, three, five speakers, five minute talks, and then we'll have like 20, 30 minutes of uh, questions and debate. So, only five minutes, we'll start with uh, Sophie. Hello. I introduce you Thierry Vieville, researcher at INRIA. Hello, uh, I introduce you uh, Sophie de Quatre Barbes, and uh, she leads the she leads sorry the Class Code Project. Thank you very much. Who knows the Class Code Project? Just please, your hands up. Okay, we have a lot of work to do. So, how to teach computational thinking to all, all boys and girls from 8 to 14? By, uh, by, uh, by training teachers and educators. Yes, that's it. Class Code aims to address both through a blended learning program. Five MOOCs and two books to discover, discover, discover and manage it. Programming, basic concepts of informatics, bits of history, and, 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 and the way to do it, pedagogy. For instance, using unplugged activities. So normally we have images too, but um, <laughs> we are very- and, uh, I'm not drunk. <laughs> So, are you ready to play a little bit with us? We will um, know if you are ready for class code. Let's try. How many of you knows who discover algorithms? Hands up. Hands up. Wow. wow. A lot of need of class code. <laughs> Nobody knows. So, so someone knows, huh? you know. Wrong answer! Good Someone try. else? Good try. It's Mr. 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 Algo. There was few hands up. Nobody? Oh. It's Oye Marie, maybe you know. It's Mr. Marie. Yes! Good yes, point! One point! So, second question. Who have played dummy robot game? Nobody. It's just a French activity, so. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, you have to try it just uh, after this talk. Hmm? Just meet up at the first floor and we will play with you. Last question yes or no? How many instructions do we need to make the cat, scratch cat, draw a square? How many scratch instruction to make a cat throw a square? I don't have the answer. It's not important. Yes, please. Ah, <laughs> oh, good answer. I like this one. Oh, you, you follow the creativity session from Margarita, don't you? <laughs> so, I think you all need class code. If you have a full-time month... Or, or just a few minutes. Class code is just made for you. And what about if you even don't know what a kid is? <gasps> no problem, my friend. Come to ClassCAD Meetup and trade your computer expertise with participants. We bet you will learn a lot. Wow, it's just amazing. And what are the wonderful people who are running this formation? Well, us. <laughs> but. Um, almost all French educational networks and informatics organizations join the movement and spread locally. And you. And you. And you. You, you and you. What are you waiting for? Classroom is open and it's free to you. Let us uh, train ourselves in order to teach computational thinking. So, how many of you knows class code? 
You'd never heard about Classical? Please, open your ears while I'm talking. <laughs> Thank you. There are some nice slides that I will show you. They have prepared very nice slides. Um, algorithm here. <laughs> Thank you. So hello everybody, my name is Mary Brown and I'm a primary school teacher and I teach in a small three teacher school in the west coast of Ireland, um, so I have beautiful views of the Atlantic Ocean from my, my room. Um, but So I just started here this year and before that I was in um, a quite a large school um, and I was in the role of learning support. Um, and resource teacher, which allowed some flexibility and um, with the timetable in order to to teach um, and to facilitate coding um, across the, the across the classes. So then you can imagine my delight of moving to this new school and having only 21 children in my class. So I thought how easy it will be to facilitate coding, um, but I was surely mistaken. So my class was small, but I had three classes with varying abilities um, within each class. So 10 children in first class, five children in second class, six boys in third class, and 12 subjects to teach. So 12 indeed. Um, I shall just list English, Irish, maths, geography, history, science, art, music, drama, PE, social and um, health education, and religion all with their own set of curricular content, content and objectives and each at uh, the class level. So ensuring everyone had access to the content and objectives was difficult. Um, so it was a ch challenge, but was it a successful one? Of course, I shall say. Um, so the first hour, of course, is for homework and reading and tables and everything that I mentioned before. And then we have our English instruction after break. Um, and after lunch, we do music and drama and art, SBHE or religion. And after which our class is then split. So, so kindly, our infant teacher takes the first class um, for maths. And at this time then our second class go to, to extra English support as they need. And I have my third class for, for maths on their own. So it's great. And then I remember thinking, um, I haven't said about when second class have maths. So that gets squashed into the day there uh, as well. So yes, it's our, our busy day. So when is there time for scratch? Or when is there time for coding? Or maybe, you know, that's not the right question that I'm posing. But in any case, there's a question to be posed and I don't know the answer yet. Um, so many times after the initial introduction of scratch to the children, um, they often ask, teacher, can we do scratch today? And I always want to say, yes, yeah, we'll do it now and drop everything. And But of course, we can't with the restraints and restrictions that are, are given. Um, so facilitating scratch takes time, especially initially, and especially in the classroom, as opposed to a, cl a code club, um, like Coder Dojo or such. Um, so I have five working computers, so even if I doubled up um, the children, um, I would still have 11 children working independently, and of course the work has to be constructive, and you know, with their, their learning, um, excuse me, meaning to their learning, you know. So I seem to be not talking about scratch anymore. But that's just it. The problems we encountered in our class were not with scratch, but rather just the issues were the practicalities of a busy school life. Indeed, the children all loved scratch. 
Um, what I have to say hugely helped were the scratch code cards. I signed up to receive them at um, the um, Boston um, conference last year. Um, they were sent to my cousin's American address and she forwarded them to me, which I'm very grateful to her for, because I'm not, sh well actually, I just noticed there that it was MIT that created them and they were absolutely um, a wonderful resource for me and for the children in the class. So um, they enabled the children to create something independently from the start and they were able to do it on their own and it set them up for success. So in summary, I suppose, just wanted to highlight the challenging nature of introducing coding into primary school, especially in a small school. Despite my background in IT and despite having um, done coding in um, several other schools and bigger schools um, and at Coder Dojo. So looking forward to next year. I'm glad I have those cards and this will be obviously their second year um, doing coding so it will make things easier and I look forward to the continued challenge as ever. So thank you for listening. Yeah, just five minutes. Okay, now it's, uh, I think it's your turn, Carmelo. Yeah, yeah. You have to click to pass the slides. Okay. Okay, okay, thank you, Frank. Um, hi everyone, uh, my name is Carmelo, also known and, as Tarmelop on Scratch. And in the last two year, uh, years, I've been lucky enough to uh, play and learn in a place called Lifelong Kindergarten at the Media Lab. Uh, so, uh, in, the, in, in, in less than 24 hours that I've been here, I've been uh, hearing computational thinking in this conference a lot, maybe more than the word scratch. So, and when I think about computational thinking, I always like reminds of the, 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 um, the scratch dog who's kind of questioning and says, hmm, so what is computational thinking? What is that we are talking about? And computational thinking, it's usually referred to something that is related to problem solving in an efficient way. So it's, it's a way for kids to learn about uh, abstractions, algorithms, and decomposing problems. And it's usually associated to something that is uh, planning, it's top-down design. Um, so it's about problems and solutions and efficiency. Uh, but to researchers that really inspire me, computational thinking is much more than this. Computational thinking is not only about the concepts, but it's above all about practices and perspectives. So it's, about, it's not only about solving problems, it's mostly about expressing yourself, creating, designing, making, and also doing this in a very iterative and experimental way. So, Still thinking, mm, so is computational thinking something that, is, is it missing something here in the, in, in the idea, in the concept? And I was looking to understand, like, what it, today, I was just, just five minutes ago, I was talking with someone about computational thinking, and my question was, how computational thinking is different from thinking? So what are the roles of computers? What, how computers can help us doing things in different way or opening up new possibilities? And for me, the key word is tinkering. When Karen Wilkinson from the Exploratorium said the phrase computational tinkering for the first time, I said, this is what we need to express this idea. And, and think, tinkering is about trying something when you don't really know what you want to do and you're guided by curiosity and whim and imagination. It's exactly why I love Scratch. It's because people can just don't know what to do and they just snap blocks together and they see a sprite and they get a new idea and they keep iterating and with a playful attitude they end up creating something that is meaningful for them. So. To me, computational tinkering is this playful approach in playing with code. And uh, it means at least two different things. One is playing with code, exactly w what you do in Scratch when you're free to express and to create something that you want to create. And on the other side, computational tinkering is also adding computation to activities that involve tinkering in the, in the physical world. So how can we design 
activities for computational tinkering. And this involves creating resources, tool facilitation, and environments. So the best way to, um, to tinkering with tinkering is tinkering with something. So <laughs> what I did, uh, it was playing around with a couple of projects that you're going to be able to uh, try out tomorrow during the session, uh, the poster session. So one is the digital light play. So it's, a, it's an activity developed by the tinkering studio at the Exploratorium in San Francisco. And we added the ability to program it with, a, with Scratch or with a prototype of, of Scratch. So with that, you can explore shadows, colors, uh, you know, all kind of this exploring physical phenomena, but also using them to create something meaningful that could be uh, an artistic installation or a vignette. And a similar thing happens with programmable art machines. We are using Lego to, uh, to giving Legos to kids and helping them create machines that draw. But in addition to draw, like the scribbling machines that you may may probably know from the Tinkering Studio, you can also program them. And we, the question is, how programmability, what programmability adds to the experience? How can we make programmability meaningful in that context? So um, one, one, I just want to leave you with one thing, with one image. You know, like it's, I just think that thinking like it's a computer scientist is important, but maybe more important to me is also helping kids to think also like artists and giving them uh, not only problems to solve but contexts in which these problems naturally arise and their solution is meaningful for for them so i just wanted to close with this 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 quote from Seymour Power that really resonates with me when we talk about, uh, when I hear a lot talking about abstraction and computational thinking as a way to uh, help kids think in a more abstract way. I just want to say that it's important to uh, understand that the good thinking is not only abstract thinking, but there are concrete ways to think that are equally important. And so if you want to reach a balance, uh, we need to absolutely reevaluate the concrete. Uh, let me know what you think, uh, and I would love to, to, to have discussions around this, even in the QA or outside. I'm very happy to share and get feedback and ideas about this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now it's Julia's turn. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Giulio Olivares. Uh, it is a bit photoshopped. <laughs> I'm an illustrator and author, and uh, she is uh, Lola Slag, um, the cute uh, character of a uh, book app for kids, and she is uh, just uh, adorable. Uh, when uh, Lola's story started, I was working uh, in traditional publishing. I never. Uh, um, I had never seen uh, an iPad, uh, I uh, didn't uh, have a smartphone, uh, I never uh, programmed anything, uh, and I thought uh, that uh, making apps uh, was uh, click, uh, quick uh, and cheap. And there were around uh, some tools promising uh, to demo democratize uh, the digital publishing by allowing um, uh, illustrators or uh, designers like me to make uh, book apps uh, without uh, having to learn to code. And uh, I spent uh, two years uh, testing uh, one of them until uh, I was uh, um, uh, suddenly dismissed I mean, uh, the software was dismissed, uh, and I was left uh, with my app uh, working uh, only in a broken, uh, unpublished, very copyrighted uh, uh, player. So uh, I felt uh, a taste because uh, they treated me um, like an illiterate, and uh, I 
felt myself not uh, like an illiterate. I studied uh, literary criticism, I studied Latin, philosophy, and I felt myself like a great person, but I had to reflect on myself. I needed uh, a scribe to express myself. I needed to, sorry, I needed to believe him. I had, he had the power to interpret my opinion, to mandate it, or uh, just uh, to leave me without any words. And that uh, is what uh, happened to me. And uh, I had uh, to understand uh, with my experience that uh, digital illiteracy acts exactly like normal illiteracy. And uh, Lola Slag had to understand that too. And uh, I was volunteering uh, in uh, my local Coder Dojo, Coder Dojo Milano, and uh, I discovered Scratch um, and uh, its um, uh, block interface. The good of uh, uh, blocks programming is that uh, um, it uh, doesn't substitute you, it uh, leaves uh, you uh, the freedom and the power of express uh, yourself, but uh, it uh, just uh, reduces uh, uh, the difficulty to type code. And uh, um, sometimes I felt uh, like uh, a running game mountain all the diesel, but uh, uh, one year later, after a lot of uh, tinkering with blocks, Lola Slug was uh, published, and it was exactly like uh, I had uh, it uh, in my mind. And uh, it uh, had uh, also some uh, uh, compensatory, compensatory tools uh, for uh, dyslexic children, like uh, um, a high readability font, uh, reading rulers, uh, narration, uh, and uh, the possibility to choice between uppercase and lowercase. And uh, all uh, these uh, uh, futures uh, was uh, um, felt like uh, impossible to develop by my first uh, uh, scribe. Uh, now my professional life uh, didn't change it, but my perspective uh, really changed. Um, I discovered that uh, I like making apps. In fact, I'm still making up with uh, a friend from, of mine. And uh, from then on, I have taken um, all the possibility uh, to defeat my, my and other people's uh, illiteracy. Lola and I uh, love uh, to help children to express uh, themselves uh, with the scratch. And uh, uh, seeing kids at work uh, make uh, me think that the best uh, democratization tool uh, is uh, education. There is uh, not uh, a software tool. It is uh, just about education, I think. And uh, see you at the poster session if uh, you want to uh, speak with me. Bye. <laughs> Thank you very much, and you're keeping on time, five minutes, so good, you're good speakers, thank you. And last but not least, it's uh, Vanessa's turn, so I'll give you the mic. Thank you. Excellent, okay, great. Thank you. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Vanessa Mazari, and uh, I'm uh, head of marketing at Generation Robot, uh, Generation Robot. It's a French company and uh, we distribute uh, educational robots, so like the, like the Timio or the Poppy Ergo or the Bebot or electronic components uh, to schools and high schools. Um, we also work with universities and we also we try to gather uh, resources, educational resources and share them with the, the teaching community to help them uh, on their journey uh, with you know this sometimes new technology and uh, so I'm just here uh, to give you a little insight tomorrow we'll have a, a poster session and uh, we try to do something pretty cool with Scratch uh, a demo uh, where people will also be able to manipulate um, a robot 
we scratch. Um, so we, we made a short video to, to show you uh, what you will see and manipulate tomorrow. So normally you don't pilot the robot with Scratch. Uh, this robot is called Sawyer, and it's a, an industrial robot that was designed by uh, Rodney Brooks. Uh, Rodney Brooks used to be for many years the head of um, computer science and artificial intelligence uh, laboratory at MIT. So we mix two MIT's uh, technology, Scratch and Sawyer. Uh, to show people that with Scratch, you can also do very advanced things such as pilot these uh, big fancy robots. And tomorrow during the poster session, uh, visitors and, and you, you will be able to manipulate and to assemble Scratch blocks to uh, make this robot move or, you know, uh, serve you a cup of coffee. Thank you. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Uh, hello, so thank you very much. And now I want all the speakers to join me at the stage. So come here, Julia, Mary, uh, everybody. Join the stage because we have uh, like 20 minutes of questions and debate. Um, so now it's your turn to ask questions to all the speakers. <laughs> The first question usually is, will the slides be available? Yes, they will. Somewhere and sometime. Uh, have you got? OK. <laughs> So, um, 
Um, I'd just like to start by saying thank you for your talks. You're all very inspirational. Uh, every single one of you has uh, done something which I think is really mer worthy, worthy of merit. Um, you can probably tell from my accent, but I'm from Ireland. And I left Ireland 10 years ago. And uh, I think Mary's comments on the fact that there doesn't seem to be enough room or time in the curriculum in schools to teach computing, I think is not just an Irish problem. It's something which I've seen and heard from all teachers from all around the world. I, I don't know if the panel or the people in the panel have anything to comment about this, but this seems to be a fundamental problem that we're all going to have to address, is the notion of, uh, do we move something out of the curriculum? Uh, I, foolishly, I, I give an interview with a, a magazine saying that computing was very, very important and that we need to make room for it, and they published an article saying that we should get rid of music and we should get rid of art and we should get rid of languages, uh, which wasn't exactly what I was saying, but I, I'd like to hear your, your opinions on how do we make space in the school curriculum for, for programming? I just, yeah, well, just, I mean, it's, it's a very good question and about making space for it and taking away something else. I mean, I don't think that we should take away something else. I think it should be, I don't, because uh, I know it's in secondary school, coding has become, um, I know in Ireland, um, a separate subject, but I think certainly for primary school, um, it should be integrated across the board because you can all the subjects that we, the 12 subjects could be all done, you know, through coding at some point, you know. So I think that's just something to keep in mind that I don't want to push out anything, but maybe it's just that we need to think about how we do everything. So I don't know if anybody else wants to contribute. Yes. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yes. I want to just forget to, uh, to teach French and mathematics and now only So I think it's, a, it's, a, it's a real issue. It's a huge thing. Okay. Yeah, like I don't have an answer. I can just, you know, like just reinforce what, what you said that it's, it's, it's not easy when the infrastructure is so. Uh, strict when you have subjects that you have to teach, when you have curriculums and content that you need to cover. Like what I love about Scratch is that when it, it, it kind of allows you, and uh, what I love about creative learning, which is basically the, the, the learning philosophy behind Scratch, is that we try to remove the, those barriers, you know, and it's very hard if you're a teacher in a school system in which you need to adapt the tool. So, but I don't know, like, I remember at one of the Scratch conference, my first Scratch conference in Barcelona, I was talking to someone and say, yeah, like, uh, Scratch is like a pencil, it's a tool, right? So, do you have a class about pencils or you make room in your uh, in, in your in, in, in the different you know subjects to introduce but not only scratch for me it's what is more most important is to introduce a way of uh, of learning by creating a, a way of learning by making projects that are meaningful for 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 children you know a, a way to create the condition for exploration and i think it's much more important than teaching loops or variables in 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 different subjects i don't know what other people think more questions Comments. Um, but actually, I would, <laughs> I would like to say something. Uh, yeah. So what I've seen, um, because I spend quite a lot of my time uh, researching uh, resources, uh, teaching uh, teaching materials, uh, to then share them with the teachers. And uh, I found a lot of, uh, they are online and they are free. They're usually uh, projects that uh, teachers are doing for their classes and then they put online and uh, using robots and coding, but they will use that to teach another subject, as you were saying. For instance, last week I saw uh, a teacher who used this uh, Ozobot. It's a little robot uh, that follows a line, and he used that uh, as a, 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 a support to, to teach uh, the um, bloodstream through the human body. Uh, so the, the, t the kids were coding the little robots with a, uh, a scratch-like interface. Uh, and for instance, the robot will go from the heart with a, a red light, means that the, the blood is healthy, and then go through each organ. Uh, so you have a, they had to code 
turn right, make a U-turn, then turn right again, make a U-turn. And then at the bottom, the lead turn blue because the, the blood is poor with oxygen and then go back. So the teacher teaches his uh, biology lesson, but also coding. And that can be applied to uh, geography. Uh, also saw a teacher who did uh, a map uh, to show uh, the exploration from Europe uh, to America using the same little robots. Uh, and so you can uh, use uh, coding and robots and, and scratch in other subjects. Uh, so that could be, I don't know, I'm not a teacher, so I don't know if, if it's possible every time, but maybe it can be a way to integrate coding without taking any time off another, another subject. I just want to add that, uh, just a I don't know how many of you know about Scratched, which is a project uh, in which it's a community of teachers who use Scratch, and they use it in very different, you know, uh, um, ways uh, to integrate it, integrating it in different subjects for different age, ra um, yeah, age ranges. So it's definitely something you wanna you wanna check out, and you can also like contribute to the community, like saying. What are you doing in your classroom with Scratch? Good. Yes. Oh. Hello. Um, this question is for Carmelo about um, your. Uh, is related to computational thinking. There are many ways to think about it. Uh, to me, uh, tinkering is uh, a playful attitude in creating something. You know, it's uh, in it, it, it's it's about it's it's not about what you do or how you. It's more about how you do it. You know, how you kind of test the boundaries of what you can do with this uh, little block or what happens like wh when I combine this thing with this other thing and when I fail I just when, when I don't obtain what I want I change something so I think it's a more of a more of a mind of a mindset a playful mindset uh, but of course to to support this we need to design activities that make room for that mindset, you know, that promote and support uh, that kind of mindset. So uh, to your question, I guess it's a kind of overarching attitude uh, in which uh, you can discover and explore concepts, you know, you can apply abstraction and the composition, but you it's not the point, it's, it's how you do it, how you learn how to design, and how you think about your process, that it's the part that's more interesting to me. Good, we still have time for one or two more questions, or if you want to talk, yes, sure. I almost agree. Do your project, Ga Kid, make your way, and as a teacher, not me, as a real teacher, I will discover, I will find out where are the competences we say in French? Where are the les savoir, the knowledge, the savoir-faire, the how to do it, and les savoir-être, how to be during your project? So the role of the teacher is no more to teach, is to follow the kid and make him discover that he has discovered things. Good, so if there are no more questions, a big applause for our six speakers. Thank you very much. Um, 
And tomorrow, two more sessions of Ignite Talks, and now we can have a break, and then we will meet at the auditorium, I think, for the Scratch 3.0 presentation, I think, isn't it? Yes? So thank you very much for joining the Ignite Talk session.